Now that we know how to find standard deviation and variance with a computer or calculator, let's practice doing it again, but with our pet data from section 3.1. And I'll add to this and say we're also going to find the mean as well. We found it earlier, but I just want to use it later on, so we might as well find it again. All right, so in a calculator, if you have your data put under stat, edit, and you have all your data, there's the pet data, and I do not have the 127 um, tarantula person. <laughs> That's not in there. So then you press stat, calculate one variable, and choose calculate. So list one is where my data is. I have no frequency list, and I just go down to calculate and press enter. And you can see the mean is right up there at the top, 2.269. But then think about which standard deviation you want because the calculator finds two of them for you. So the calculator finds sample standard deviation. So the sample mean is x bar, sample standard deviation is s, sample variance is s squared. And it also finds the population value, which would be mu, sigma, and sigma squared. So when you're looking at the calculator, you want to think, oh, this was a sample, so I want s, right? We're going to use these values. As a matter of fact, that's answering the question down below before we've even answered this question, which is their statistics. Because the data are from a sample. As a matter of fact, up here you could say statistics, which are these values, and parameters, which are these values. Now the calculator doesn't really know the difference, so it just finds them both for you. Oh, and StatCrunch, of course. If I have my pet data right here, I go to um, Stat, Summary Stat, Column, and I click on Column. And then I say I want my pet data, and then I want you to find the mean. And the nice thing about the stat crunch is it'll actually find the variance in the standard deviation, so you don't have any extra work to do. So there they are right there. So 2.269 is x bar, which of course the unit, if you will, is pets. I'm going to say the standard deviation next, which is s, which is 2.2, oh, excuse me, 2.127. And then the variance is s squared. Now, StatCrunch is giving it to us, but if you don't have um, StatCrunch, or you're just not working with StatCrunch and you're preferring the calculator, oh, this is the mean, this is the standard deviation, this is the variance. What you can do is you can take the s value that was given and square it. So if I had the calculator, I can see there's s right there, which is the 2.127. I'm going to ignore the sigma because this was not a population. So I tell the calculator, hey, take 2.127 and square it. Oops, I lost my decimal point in there. There you go. And then I go to the end and I want to square it. Enter. And it tells me that the s squared is about 4.524. Now the units again for these data were pets which means the unit for the variance which is useless is pets squared which again variance doesn't have um, an interpretation in that way variance just means the larger the number the variance is the larger the spread is for a data set that's all we have for an interpretation right now again it is more useful for later stuff but not for what we're doing right now Oops, sorry all right, now the reason I wanted us to find the mean is because I want us to be able to do this interpretation piece, which we have a script for that we need to follow. So let me go back a page and grab that script. We expect the data variable written in context, so we're going to write it all out what it is, to be whatever the mean is, give or take the standard deviation. Okay, so we expect the average, well, we expect a random JC student, there we go these were all JC students or you could say math 133 students either way to have 2.269 pets give or take 2.127 pets okay so we're following that script the Explanation and context is all the stuff, right? That's the context. And then there's the mean, there's the standard deviation. 
right? So we're following that script. All right, did we have any class members with an unusual number of pets? Okay, so remember, unusual means past two standard deviations. So you would take the mean and you would plus or minus two standard deviations. So I want 2.269 plus two times 2.127, right? Two times S. And then I want 2.269 minus 2 times 2.127. I want to find both of these numbers. Any student that is past those two numbers is unusual, right? So past two standard deviations means this, right? All right, so let me grab a calculator because I don't know what these numbers are off the top of my head. Okay, so 2.269 plus 2 times... 2.127. So I use the times symbol there. You could also use the parentheses. That'll work. So 2.269 minus 2. I'll use parentheses this time. Either way. So we get, whoop, except I pressed the wrong button apparently. Oh, I have too many decimal places. Darn it. All right. So, but I lost the other one. Let me go grab it. Well, actually, I can just grab this one and put a plus in there. There we go. All right, so I find 6.523 pets and negative one. Okay, well, that's not possible. So obviously, we did have one person that was unusual. So, yes, the student with eight pets was unusual because they're past 6.25 or 523, excuse me. Right, they're above 6.523, right? Oh, one other comment before I go any further. Um, you'll notice that we leave the decimal places in. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hey, a random student could not have 0.269 of a pet. That's not possible. That's true, but that's not really what we're talking about. Even though we say that, what we're talking about is an average overall. So that if you had 10 students, you'd expect 22.69 pets. And if you had 100 students, you'd expect 226 pets. So you don't round these. You leave them with their decimal places. So um, we can actually put that back here on the script. We can say, you know, do not round I mean, other than a few decimal places, but don't round to the nearest number or something like that. Just leave them with all their decimal places. That's fine. That's appropriate, actually, because you're not really talking about what one student can have in terms of pets. You're really talking about an overall average for all random students. All right. Now, one last thing we want to make a comment about. It will be able to be seen if we add the 127 back in. So I'm going to go to stat, edit and go to the bottom of the list by pressing up and type in 127, oops, or type in the wrong number, there we go, 127. So I'm gonna to go to stat, calculate one variable and rerun it. And I want you to notice what happens. We already knew the mean and the standard deviation, or I mean the mean gets weird. So I should add that in, mean, just one more time. So the mean becomes, I'm gonna change colors here. 6.889. But now we see that S has turned from 2.127, which is what it was before, to look at that number, 24.095. It's huge. Absolutely huge. Right? Whoa. <laughs> That's a lot. And that is actually the reason we're doing this. S squared, we could find by taking that 24.095 and squaring it. Like that. And if we have stat crunch, which I think is even easier, we just go down here to the one and to the bottom of this column, type in 127. You don't even have to go back to the stat calculators thing, summary statistics. You don't even have to do that. You can just go to options and click refresh. And there it is. 
it refreshed it. <laughs> so it, it put the 127 in and I've got all my new numbers. So you can see the 6.889, you can see the 24.095, and it's telling us the variance of 580.564. And the unit for that would be pets squared, which again has no interpretation value, don't worry about it. Now what do we notice? That's why we're doing this. Right? Whoa. <laughs> right? Actually, it's whoa on all of them. They all got really, really large, just with one outlier. So we're noticing that the all three of these values, so all three of these numerical summaries, were greatly increased by the outlier. Hmm. And that leads us to the idea of resistancy, which is that means that, and I guess we can make a note right here, X bar, well, let me just say mean standard deviation, because of course it could be for the parameters as well. The mean, the standard deviation, and the variance are all not resistant. Right? They don't resist the pull of that outlier, which means if you have an outlier in your data set, they're not good measures to use, should not be used with skewed data.